So hello, good morning. I am Patel Hit, and I am back with another video on MATLAB Octave series. Before starting off with today's lecture, I would be really happy if you take some time and subscribe to our channel. So in today's video, I'll be explaining you some of the important concepts of matrices, as I have promised in the earlier video. It will comprise of a small concept and a short example. Also, I'll be uh, providing you with some examples so that you can get a better understanding of the matrix uh, manipulation what we have learned in previous few videos. So let's get started. So now, uh, these are some important concepts of matrix. So first we'll start off with an inverse of a matrix. What is an inverse? So when an inverse of a matrix is multiplied with the original matrix, you would get uh, identity matrix. And identity matrix, as you know, has the diagonal elements 1 while all other elements are 0. So let's see uh, what is the inverse of a matrix X that is given in the example. And it has a, a row matrix that is 1, 2, 3 in single row. So we'll type in X. 1, 2, 3, on hitting enter, we will see that uh, X matrix is formed with one row and three columns. So uh, we, we can find inverse of a matrix by typing in INV, uh, then a bracket, and inside the bracket you can pass the matrix of whom you want to find uh, an inverse. So before hitting enter, I would like to say that it would give an error, and a kind of error. Uh, will be understood by you after I show the result. So hitting enter. You see that the error is A should be a square matrix. So you should always remember that any matrix that you pass to I and V should be square matrix and also non-singular. So what is non-singular? We'll see now. So first define a square matrix and that is X equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Hitting enter, you see a square matrix is formed. Now, to uh, see whether it's invertible or not, or else to see whether it's a singular matrix or not, you can just type in DET of X. If DET of X uh, is 0, then you should prevent using INV because then it would give INF uh, as all the elements of the matrix and that is not defined. So, DET of X, you see that is very close to zero. So I'll just show you INV of X would be something of this kind and that is not acceptable. So instead we use PINV of X and that would give you the right kind of result that you want and PINV uh, is a general method of finding inverse in MATLAB and I would always prefer using PINV over INV because uh, PINV get, gives you an accurate result all the time when you are finding the inverse of a matrix. So just prevent using INV and use PINV where PINV if you want to learn more is more Penrose inversion technique of uh, inversion for matrix. So let's jump and see uh, what's the second concept and it is the singular matrix. So as I told you that a singular matrix is a matrix uh, whose determinant is zero and so if the determinant of a matrix is zero you can say that a matrix is not invertible as I as I showed you here uh, DET of X is very small that is close to zero and it can be approximated to zero you see that INV of X gave you a warning that it is more than the machine precision and so it's non invertible when you see in mathematical terms but you can use more Penrose inversion to find by using PINV. So this was about singular matrix. You would see matrix multiplication. So uh, whoever has done uh, coding in C, you would know how matrix multiplication is done. But this is a very short and brief thing uh, how a multiplication is done in matrix. So y is equal to a into b, where a and b are the known matrix, and y is the product of multiplication of two matrices. So you see that uh, we would run three different variables 
where k would vary from 1 to l where l is equal to m equal to n and then m and n are the number of rows of a or the number of columns in b because you see that both are equal while you do multiplication so you would run a whole loop and that to three loops while calculating matrix in c but now it is made simple in matlab also the transpose of matrix transpose is uh, what i taught you in the last video and i'll show you an example like we have defined the x matrix and x apostrophe that would calculate the transpose of a matrix uh, you would see that uh, it would display a result that changes the elements of a row to the elements of a column and vice versa so this uh, were the pretty much simple and necessary concepts that you must be familiar with before uh, doing matrix manipulation in octave or matlab now we'll be moving on to series of examples to make you uh, well acquainted with what you have learned in the last video so we'll be starting off with a series of examples that i have structured myself uh, for those who are viewing this video so for the first part of our question i'll say that uh, i'll i'll just speak out a question i'll speak out i'll read out the question for you so the first question is if i go to market 1 and buy 3 apples and 10 tomatoes and then i go to the market 2 and buy 7 apples 5 bananas and 3 tomatoes how much quantity of items have i bought so it is a very trivial problem and in day to day life you just add the similar quantities like you add 7 plus 3 and 10 apples 10 plus 3 13 tomatoes and 5 bananas but i'll i'll show you in matlab how you can calculate the same just using matrix which we have formed and which we have learned how to how we can make it so you just make a uh, m1 the number of um, quantities that you bought so you bought 3 apples zero banana and 10 tomatoes it is pretty much important for you to mention the number of bananas that you bought because uh, because you see that if two matrices have different dimensions uh, it would be impossible for us to perform the addition operation so i have mentioned zero bananas so just remember the order that first apple then banana and then tomatoes uh, is the order that we have entered the number of quantities of it so you just enter and you uh, create a matrix that is 3 0 and 10 where three rows uh, where it is, a, it is a matrix of three rows and one column so you type in the quantities you bought from the second market so uh, you bought seven apples five bananas and three tomatoes so you hit enter and you see that the second matrix is formed so the total quantity where i will write it tq is equal to m1 uh, plus m2 and hitting enter you would see that as i told you uh, the first uh, quantities of apples so you bought 10 apples the second one is for bananas so you bought 5 bananas and 13 tomatoes and so it is pretty much easy a task uh, using matlab you can add it and find uh, the number of quantities or whatever uh, you have bought from the market it would seem very trivial to use it in matlab but when you have thousands of quantities uh, that you are buying and selling you can just uh, make a matrix and just add it so that you don't have to do that calculation in your mind for thousand different times and so it's very much helpful for that now uh, we'll be moving on to the second part of our question and that is uh, after doing my grocery i found that one apple from uh, market 1 uh, is rotten and two tomatoes and two bananas from market 2 are rotten so i'll go back and return them the items without uh, getting the new one in exchange so what now what are the number of quantities that i have after returning so we can say that um, uh, i'll name the n1 the number of quantities that i return to market 1 is i return one apple zero bananas and zero tomatoes to the market 1 uh, and i return them uh, return the second market uh, let me see once um, i return two tomatoes and two bananas so the first was for apple so zero apples return to market 2 two. two bananas return to market 2 and two tomatoes return uh, so hitting enter you see that the second matrix is formed and so um, tq2 after the second operation where, where i return things 
I see that the number of quantities left are n1 minus n2. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. My bad. So you see that now 9 apples, 3 bananas and 11 tomatoes are left after I return the rot and quantities to the market 1 and to the market 2. So this is uh, operation that I uh, form using matrix addition and uh, subtraction. Now we will see how we can use multiplication and division uh, for the remaining part of our example. So now uh, I sit down and try to calculate the cost uh, of the quantities that I have purchased. Uh, note here that uh, whatever quantities, quantities that I returned in the second part of our question I get my money back. So uh, that there is uh, no uh, buying of things back after I return things. So uh, cost of one apple is 15 rupees, banana, one banana is 7 rupee and uh, rupees and uh, the cost of one tomato is 4 rupees. So what is the final cost after I return things in the second part? So you'll be thinking like you, I can calculate the, I can multiply the number of quantities and the price but that's not a big issue when you uh, do it in MATLAB. So I'll just type in price and create a matrix of price and that would be uh, like I uh, tell, uh, like I always say you, the number of uh, column should be equal to the number of rows uh, for uh, matrix multiplication to take place. So you see that TQ2, the final quantity after the second operation is of uh, dimension 3 into 1 and so I'd be obliged to make a matrix that is of one row and three columns. So the price of an apple was, uh, let me check, uh, 15 rupees, okay. So you type in 15 rupees for an apple, 7 rupees for banana and 4 rupees for tomato and you hit enter and create a matrix price. So to find the cost, you type in cost equal to um, price into TQ2. So you see that you will be paying 200 rupees for all the quantities that you uh, bought and returned home after performing the second operation. So this is very uh, important thing which you could perform on a large scale to minimize the manipulation and computation time. So this is a very handy and powerful tool to use and the last uh, example we should be seeing is of uh, matrix division. So uh, it's a purely mathematical example where you are given equations of lines uh, where 2x plus y is equal to 1 is first line and x plus 2y equal to 0 is the second line and we, we need to find the point of intersection. So what we, de, uh, what, what we do in, what we do in uh, mathematics is we just um, eliminate one of x or y and then calculate the value of x and then substitute that value of x in any of the equation and find the value of y and we see the point of intersection and that is uh, eight to nine steps of uh, calculation and um, uh, hardly uh, two or three minutes of computation time. But in Mat MATLAB, it would be uh, hardly a matter of 30 seconds to find the point of intersection. So uh, it's very important to know how we can write a matrix. So you would be writing a matrix uh, L1 and it will be comprising of uh, the coefficients of x and y. So for the first line you, sh uh, you should uh, enter the, num uh, the coefficients in a single row. So you write 2 and 1 as 2 is the coefficient of x and 1 is the coefficient of y. In the next line to create an x row we uh, add a colon, a semicolon and we type in the coefficients of x and y of the second line. So you see that it's 1 and 2. So you write 1 and 2 and hit enter to create a matrix L1. Uh, you also, you should also be uh, creating another matrix that is R1 equal to uh, the uh, uh, number on the right side of the equal to sign. You should be putting in, putting it in the R1 matrix. So 1 and 0 because they are of two different lines. So I write it in the 1 and 0 form in the next row 1 and 0. So uh, you'd be wondering how we can find the value of x and y. So you just type in x and 
obviously you would be having you can solve it using matri um, uh, matrix by l1 into x where x uh, x equal to x and y uh, you're doing in mathematics but we won't do that stuff here we'll just type in uh, x will be sorry i'm sorry we'll be having the equation of form l1 into x equal to r1 where uh, x will be equal to x and y but we won't be doing here because it will give an error uh, because x and y uh, inside the x matrix is not defined and also we are to find the value of x so what we do is we will be bringing we will be using the left hand division as i uh, told you yesterday so x equal to l1 left hand division r1 so uh, you would see that in solving the line as i told you by substitution and elimination you would be getting the same result where the point of intersection would be x equal to 0 0.667 and the point of intersection in the y coordinate would be minus y is equal to minus 0 0.333 so this is uh, for this video uh, where i showed you some of the important concepts of matrix and also uh, demonstrated you some of the examples that would clear your concepts of matrix and matrix manipulation if you have any kind of doubt or you need extra assistance, you can just mail us at the email ID that I have mentioned in the description below. We'll be providing you the free assistance and uh, we'll be providing some of the important material if you want to learn more about matrix and uh, computation in MATLAB or Octave. So I hope you like this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and share this video to your friends and those who want to learn MATLAB and Octave. So, till then, keep watching and keep learning and be safe.